Your local game store means a lot of things to different people. It's a local hub for socializing with others about your hobbies, a place to network and expand your interests, and a marketplace to sell off pieces as well as to add to your collection. It's basically a nerd pawn shop where secondhand meets high demand, and it can be confusing and intimidating. But don't worry, now you have a friend in the gaming business. My name is Mason, and I'm one of the owners of Cardinal Gaming, a game store in Louisville, Kentucky. And this is Card Shop Candids. Folks, how we doing? Hello, welcome to season two of Card Shop Candids. Mason here, actually at the store. Look, not a green screen, not a green screen. It's an actual. I'm actually here. <laughs> I want to do. Uh, come over to the shop, you know, and hang out and uh, spend a couple days uh, and make some new videos for the Card Shop, Card Shop Candid series and touch on some more stuff. Just, there's there's more. There's always more. Like, and I appreciate everybody watching and supporting this series and, and all the other videos. I appreciate all you guys. So, uh, thank you for hanging out and, and enjoying the series and hopefully uh, you get more benefit and more information out of the series. I got some, I got some good ones on the way, I promise. It's, uh, it's good stuff. So today, I'm going to talk about something I, I I need to like really publicly address at this point because I'm going to fix this camera a little bit. It's a little bit, a little bit tilted. Okay, there we go. I want to address something really, really quick. And in my buildup when my channel was getting popular and things like that, uh, obviously the major contention and, and the thing that kind of made me a villain. Uh, which I, I won't, you know, it's okay. I'm not a big, uh, I'm not really uh, upset about anything like that. It's all good and fun. Uh, people joke about it now, $7 hot dogs, yada, yada, yada. You know, it's all good. It's all good and fun. It's okay. Um, but in that time, the major contention was how sealed prices in dry periods uh, get priced and how things kind of develop. And obviously... In the videos and stuff like that about the topic, and when I that kind of stuff was relevant, people were really all abuzz about it, and rah rah, LGS is rah, angry. Um, yeah, there's a lot of that, and obviously I tried to come up with uh, reasonings and, and try to explain to people where it made sense, and uh, kind of quell the, uh, the 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 pitchforks, angry mobs. But I really want to touch on it now because outside of that period of time this is how prices work and i know this is not groundbreaking stuff but it is something that needs to be said because i think there is still a lot of confusion a lot of people upset a lot of people um not understanding where and how and what dictates price Think of stores like, let's go back in the 90s. Let's go way back, way back, before the internet and all that stuff. When you walked into a store and, and you saw something on the shelf and you saw the price and you're like, hmm, uh, I don't know if that's a good price or not. It's, I don't have internet. I don't know what's, I'm just going to have to assume and, and take a stab whether or not I want to pay this price or not for this, this item. Uh, with the provocation of the internet and people being able to look up things and compare prices and all that. We've gone away from that sort of mentality to going and saying, this isn't a good enough deal for me. Why are you charging this much for that? It used to be on the consumer, hey, is this worth the money that you're going to pay for it? To now, hey, this is this much on Amazon. Why are you the seller charging this much for it and i don't know how we got here exactly i think i mean i have an idea and again the internet has a lot to do with it and, and just the easeability of being able to search and, and have that information and be able to look at just the absolute rock bottom price at any given moment that definitely plays a role in in, in all this type of stuff but as again on this side of the of the glass counter as somebody that sells on 
worldwide platforms and, uh, you know, just locally, I have to balance these items. And especially now, still, still, we're in a time where product isn't, uh, you know, easily, readily available. I can't just get more brilliant stars. I have to decide every day. Every day I have to decide whether or not the price that I have on this box is going to be good enough for if somebody walks in the door and wants to buy it, they make the conscious decision, yes, that's worth what I'm going to pay for it, I will buy it. And if that is not happening, how low do I have to go before with an online market, I don't just get completely wiped out and bought uh, with everything out from underneath me. This is a perfect example when the, the release period happened with the big run-up of the price, the price spike as it went towards release. Uh, this was a, a, a major good example and is still a good example because it is still a very, very highly demanded product. In the last 48 hours, I'll say two days because, you know, the last two days that we've been open, uh, I've sold somewhere in the range of 40 boxes of this. That's 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 30, that's five cases-ish of Bruin Stars booster boxes. Just the booster boxes themselves. 40 of them in 48 hours. Again, give or take, you know. This product is, is not having any issues selling. And I have this product at $139.99. And again, this is, whenever you see this, this is, price is going to change. And it's probably like 100 bucks right now. And you're going to be like, Mason, what the hell are you doing? Relax. Again, I'm trying to balance between customers that walk in and are happy to see the price and will buy it versus people that are online also want to buy it, you know, potentially. And, you know, it may not be the absolute rock bottom cheapest, but there are reasons and, and people buy things uh, for a lot of different reasons. Again, uh, somebody that's established LGS, uh, trustworthiness, uh, you know, if they see me on here, maybe they want to support me and buy stuff from me. I've had plenty of people that say that and say, look, I know you're not the cheapest price, but hey, I want to buy and support you and buy from you because, you know, I, I know when I'm going to buy something, it's going to come in good shape and it's going to be the genuine product. That absolutely makes sense. And to some people, that does make sense. S to some people, it does not make sense. That's crazy. That, why would you do that? I know. People are different. I, people are different. It's crazy. But just everybody spends their money how they want to spend it. Uh, but to better illustrate my point, even better than this, we're going to hop over here to Magic. I know. Magic's uh, the, the no man's land on this channel. But Neon Dynasty Collector Boosters. Um, this is my last few packs that I have. Um, these probably won't make it through the weekend. But um, as you can see, we were doing 220 on them. Uh, they are established now. Um, <laughs> 260, 270-ish. Who knows how far uh, they've gone now. Uh, I don't know because I don't have any more boxes to sell. Because the last couple boxes I had, somebody online went and bought out my entire inventory. When they were mm, like $25 too cheap. It happens. Um, so buyouts do happen. Things disappear off my shelf. It does happen. And if, because again, if people just look up on Google and search all these other stores that are see, have things for super cheap when they do this ramp up of price. Same thing that happened all last year and the year before that where boxes were disappearing very quickly. Prices were quickly going up. And all these little LGSs out in Kentucky and Missouri and Idaho and all these places that might have them for too cheap, but I still want to sell them online. All this stuff is is quickly disappear disappearing. And the people, like in California, Florida, New York, these places that are already super expensive and, and is probably more than likely not going to see any lower prices than that, are buying them up because they're not accessible and they're for a cheaper price than they would be able to buy them if they were local. This is... It's easy economics, but again... I've had to defend myself over this so many times that people just don't understand. So, this is how this is working. So, it's not like a, a thing where I say, nope, that's what the price it is. Um, this is the price it'll always be um, until I run out of this product. Bummer. No, there's more to it than that. Like, wave two of this is potentially coming next week. I am watching the price of this booster box very, very closely. Because if people start lowering prices on, like TCG Player, 
and a whole bunch of stock is being released on T Street Player, I know that Wave 2 is actually coming and that I need to either lower my price low enough to where I can get through my current stock so that when I accept this new stuff, I'm not sitting on old product from the first wave. So I have money to pay for the next wave and that the price is going to go down. So I may as well lower it 10% before it lowers like 30%. It's, it's not black and white. It's not super easy. This is not like just put it to the lowest possible for a local store that doesn't work. And people that are selling at the lowest po possible price are running on a totally different business model than me. It's, it's complicated. It's more, it's more to it than that. And I hope this helps. Like, I see this item as a finite item. I need to hold on to this item until I can get more of it. Or it's going to go away and I'll never have any more of it. So I may as well get the most I can out of this item right here. That's the idea behind the prices. That's why sealed product goes up and down in a roller coaster like it does. And yes, you are at a disadvantage because I have information that you don't. That's the whole point of this channel is so I can share that information and say, hey, wave two of Brent Stars is coming. If you're going to buy it for the price that you're at, hold on because next week it's going to be super cheap. That's the whole point of this channel. That's why I'm trying... I'm on your side. We're all... All LGSs are on your side. I don't know if you guys want to see it that way, but we are. So, just... I promise you, people that are in business right now, it's a rough time to be in business. With prices going whoop, 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 whoop. And again, wave two of this potentially coming down the pike. And I'm still sitting on Fusion Strike. I'm still sitting on 250... Uh, ETBs of, of build, building battles for, or not building battles, but ETBs for Brilliant Stars. This, this game's not easy. This this business is not easy. Even though you think, oh, Stonkers, oh, wow, tons of money. It's, you can very, very easily get yourself stuck and in a bad situation. And I've seen, and I know, a lot of stores in the past couple months were in a bad situation. Brilliant Stars really kind of saved us because obviously the set is an absolute home run, slam dunk. But it was scary. It was scary for a long time in January, February, just because we were sitting on a lot of dead product, and with this stuff coming down the pipes, people weren't spending money. Now people seem to be more receptive. People are buying this and another box of something else, just kind of, you know, get some variety. People are getting back into collecting this new set, so it kind of supplements and helps out all the other stuff selling. It's, it's all symbiotic. There's all these things that come into play, and the next set is coming right down the pipes. So it's 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 a, bit, a big game and it's a very risky game. It's not all free tendies and seven dollar hot dogs. I promise you. Hopefully that helps. Hopefully you guys continue to understand. And again, if you have any questions at all, put me in the comments. Email me. I'm very accessible. I feel like. Let me know how you feel. And if you have questions, I'll happily cover them about your product and what's happening and what's going on. More than happy to do that for you. That's why I'm here. That's why I have a channel. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for supporting the channel, supporting the store, car shop candidates, all that. Thanks, guys. Hey, guys. Mason here again one more time. Really do appreciate you guys watching the video. Make sure if you like the series, give it a like. It's free. It costs you nothing. And if you are really liking the videos, please go back and watch the rest of the stuff from the series. It really helps out the channel. You should be seeing that pop up on the screen now. Also, if you have any ideas or topics that you want me to cover, go down in the comment section and let me know. But I really do appreciate you guys. Bye-bye!